This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at temperature and changes of state. So we'll begin the video with a recap of the changes of state. So starting on the left, we have solid to liquid, which is melting. And then we have liquid to gas, which is evaporation or boiling. And then from right to left, we have gas to liquid, which is condensation and liquid to solid, which is freezing. Two more less common changes of state are solid to gas, which is sublimation, and gas to solid, which is deposition. From left to right, heat is absorbed, so these changes of state are endothermic. And then from right to left, heat is released, so these changes are exothermic. So next we'll have a look at some temperature scales. So the two temperature scales which you'll use in DP chemistry are the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale. So the Celsius scale is the most common one that you'll use in everyday life, but the Kelvin scale is one that you don't come across that often. So the Kelvin scale is what we call an absolute temperature scale, which basically means the lowest possible value on the Kelvin scale is zero Kelvin. And unlike the Celsius scale, you cannot have a negative Kelvin value. So temperatures in Kelvin are always positive. So we start at the bottom, which is zero Kelvin, also known as absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees C. So next we have zero degrees C, which is the point at which water freezes. And this is equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin. And then we have 100 degrees C, which is the boiling point of water. And this corresponds to 373.15 Kelvin. So one degree on the Kelvin scale is equal to one degree on the Celsius scale. So if you have an increase in temperature of 10 degrees C, that corresponds to an increase in temperature of 10 Kelvin. And to convert from degrees C to Kelvin, we add or subtract 273.15. So for example, 25 degrees C is equal to 298.15 Kelvin. Another important point about the Kelvin scale is that the absolute temperature in Kelvin is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. So this graph shows the relationship between average kinetic energy and temperature in Kelvin. And as we can see from the line, it shows a directly proportional relationship. So if we double the temperature in Kelvin, we double the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. So we'll end the video by looking at a heating and cooling curve. So on the y-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. And on the x-axis, we have heat added. So this example is for water. And we start on the bottom left with solid water, which is known as ice. So as we add heat, the temperature increases until we reach zero degrees C. At this point, the ice begins to melt. And we can see that the line becomes horizontal, which basically means that as the ice is melting, there is no change in the temperature. And the reason for this is that as heat is added, instead of being used to increase the kinetic energy of the particles, it's being used to overcome the intermolecular forces between the water molecules. Once the ice has become liquid water, we then see the temperature start to increase once more, until we reach a temperature of 100 degrees C, which is when the water begins to boil. So as we can see, once the water begins to boil, the temperature remains constant. And the reason for this is that the added heat energy is being used to overcome the intermolecular forces between the water molecules, instead of increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. And then once the water has boiled, it becomes a gas which is known as steam, and the temperature begins to increase once again. So if we were going in the opposite direction, we would start with a gas, which would condense to a liquid, which would then cool down, and then freeze to become a solid, and then the temperature would decrease once more. So from this, we can see that during changes of state, the temperature remains constant. So at this point, the added heat energy is being converted to potential energy and not kinetic energy. So to summarize, during a change of state, we have an increase or decrease in potential energy, but not kinetic energy. So that's all from this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel.